Hi guys, customers all over the world are up and flying on their flight boards and absolutely loving them. We're receiving amazing feedback, photos and videos. Please keep them coming. Flightboard is a durable and very reliable craft, but it needs to be cared for. We've seen very few issues in the field, but we've taken what we've learned and put this information into this troubleshooting and maintenance update. To help you maximise your flightboard experience for many years to come, watch this video and follow the tips provided. I'll be giving you some new information on batteries, hand controllers and seals, but also reiterating some important things that are already covered in our assembly and learning to flightboard videos. Okay, let's start with the board seal. It's important to keep your battery compartment as dry as possible. Although everything in this compartment is waterproof, moisture and especially salt water will increase the deterioration of the connectors and other components over time. Take care of the silicon board seal by carefully wiping away any sand or salt water from both sealing surfaces with a cloth and fresh water. This will give you a great seal. Don't place the flight cell battery down on a sandy beach before you install it as it can bring sand into the battery cavity. You don't need to apply Vaseline or other lubricants and doing so can attract sand. Just keep the seal and lid clean and you'll be good to go. If any water does make its way into the battery compartment, wipe it out with a cloth and fresh water and dry it thoroughly. You can hose out the battery box every once in a while with fresh water, but ensure you dry it properly, including the connectors, before you pack it away. The flight cell battery stores a lot of energy and it's really important that you respect it. Always charge flight cell in a safe place, away from flammable items and always under supervision. When plugged into your charger, you need to activate the battery by attaching the magnetic charging fob. You will see the battery lights turn on when the magnet is in the correct location. You can also use the magnet in the hand controller to activate the battery for charging. The battery is durable and waterproof. However, it can become damaged due to mishandling or age. Always inspect the battery for physical damage before each use. And if damage is detected, do not use the battery. While the flight cell is waterproof, this waterproofing is the last line of defence. The safest battery is a dry battery. If a damaged board seal causes your battery compartment to leak and the battery gets wet, you should check flight cell for water ingress before charging or further use. You can do this via the sight glass. Stand the battery upright for 15 seconds and then on its side with the sight glass down for 15 seconds. This will allow even a small amount of water to make its way to the sight glass. If water is present, a colour changing label in the sight glass will turn red. Clean and dry your battery to keep it clear of sand and salt with a cloth. Don't hose it, we want to keep flight cell dry. Now let's talk about the data connectors. These are very high quality components, but they're the most vulnerable part of the system. If you experience issues such as the board lacking throttle or not pairing, Chances are that your data connector is dirty or damaged. Always plug the data connectors in carefully. If the pins become broken, your flight board won't function. If the data pins get dirty or exposed to salty moisture, they can build up a corrosive coating that can cause connection issues. You can clean contacts with a spray of contact cleaner. The data connector is rated for a thousand cycles, but don't worry, the cables are replacement parts. The best way to care for your connector is to keep your board assembled. This keeps the pins sealed from moisture and dirt. If you can't keep it assembled, it's okay, just clean the contacts regularly. Look after your connectors and you'll experience years of enjoyment. Okay, let's talk about the flight controller. This is a small and durable unit. Keep your flight controller away from sand and especially a sandy shore break. Sand can become stuck under the trigger, which can impede its ability to pair, or for the throttle to engage, or for the throttle to cut when you let go of the trigger. Rinse the flight controller with fresh water by immersing it, or give it a quick hose through the gaps underneath the flight controller. If you have problems charging your flight controller, apply contact cleaner to the charging pins, or to the charging cable itself. The most common error that riders make is to accidentally unpair the flight controller from the board. The system is designed so that you can put the board into pairing mode, for example to connect a new hand controller, by holding the hand controller over the arming magnet for 10 seconds. 
When riding the board, you only need to hold the magnet over the arming pad for a few seconds. When you feel the flight controller vibrate, move it away and pull the trigger to get moving. If you accidentally keep the hand controller over the arming pad for too long, the board will unpair from the hand controller. You'll know this has happened because the board light will be flashing and the flight controller will show the broken connection icon. It's easy to fix this issue. Just repair by holding the plus button for five seconds to put the flight controller into pairing mode and then hold the flight controller over the arming pad again for 10 seconds. The flight controller and board will then reconnect. If at some stage you damage the propeller or the propeller duct, please don't try and disassemble these items from the power unit without first contacting Flightboard for specific instructions. If, for example, you unscrew this whole end cap by mistake, lubricant from the shaft seals will leak out, and if it's not replaced properly, salt water can get into your motor and gearbox and damage them permanently. After each use, you can leave the board assembled or disassemble it depending upon your preference and your storage constraints. If you leave the board assembled, it's important to rinse with fresh water after each use. Take particular care to rinse around the propulsion system connection plate, just with gentle pressure, and also the fuselage and wings to wash away any salt water or sand. Salt around the E4 flange can cause galvanic corrosion if left without cleaning. If you do leave your flight board assembled, you should take time to disassemble the board every few weeks to properly clean the various components. Sunscreen and other oils can discolour the propulsion system metal, so warm soapy water is good to use or even car wash to clean the system carefully. Disassemble the wings and tail regularly and ensure that TEF gel has been applied to the bolts that bolt into the aluminium. Also try to keep your board, including its bag, out of the sun for extended periods. Follow these tips and you'll experience many years of enjoyment from your flight board. If you have any problems, contact us at support at flightboard.com. Okay, take care and have fun. Mm -hmm.